Hey guys, Professor Bill of Comic Book University, and today's Marvel Super Heroes Advanced Role-Playing Game System Explanation, we are going to be talking about programming and reprogramming. Now, first off, it needs to be understood, this game was created, at least finished creation, in 1984. 1986 is when this advanced uh, role-playing system, uh, system actually came out. So, computers back then, if you're like 20 or under... Just, I don't know how much you know about this, but, like, there was no internet back then. None. Nada. Nothing. Zero. Zilch. Nada. Big fat goose egg. Zero. All right? So, please, you know, bear with me when I say these rules are so out of date, they're ridiculous. All right? But we're going to try and work with them as best we can. Okay? Uh, internet, for the sake of conversation, didn't come into existence for regular people, non-Pentagon people, until 1996, 1997, 1998 for most people. And even then, it was all still dial-up, like AOL and nonsense like that. Like, no. Nah. And pretty soon, they started using coaxial cable to start get some real service going without having to, you know, oh, I can't use my telephones anymore. Yeah, we use telephones with landlines, all right? Wayland didn't come along until much later on, the wireless internet. And I actually, for the conversation worked on one of the original Wayland projects. That's right. Uh, kind of cool. Just saying, kind of cool. That was back in 1998. Anyway, <laughs> so um, this system is going to be a bit out of date, but together we're going to try and modify this a little bit and make it work. So computers, and mind you, when I'm talking about computers or robots or anything with uh, an artificial intelligence, whether it's an AI proper, like a singularity, uh, self-contained consciousness or not, we're still talking about a reason feat role. Uh, your regular computer, uh, whether it's a computer way back when or the computers today, not too much difference, all right? And the idea that you're still trying to talk to the computer, it's being translated, unless you actually know like HTML or, or some other uh, programming uh, feed, so that the programming language, so that you could try and communicate with the, the computer on a more base level without the restrictions of the language that is accessible to most of us. <coughs> Excuse me. So, obviously the higher your reason and the better talents that you have, the more this is gonna help. Your average computer, if you remember the robots section, the average um, robot will either have a typical or good reason. Typical or less reason means it cannot talk. It cannot verbally talk, communicate in a standard language to you and I. It would maybe speak in binary or whatever. Uh, the computer could be more intelligent, but that's just, again, this is just the way that uh, this was done way back in 1986. Nobody, like Steve Gerber, nobody could have possibly uh, expected that this would happen, you know, today's, you know, computers and whatnot. And you go back and look at even the sci-fi movies back then. What did anybody really know? You know, say how smart could R2-D2 and C-3PO really be, you know? So all those rules were just made in general. So by all means, feel free to hack and slash these as, as much as you want, but be consistent. That's what counts. So actually make your own rules. Don't just flub each and every time. And it helps to know the original rules first. So, um, a computer or a robot with, uh, excuse me, more specifically a robot with good reason or higher is capable of regular human interaction speech, okay? As opposed to hand gestures or just, you know, a, a readout or whatever. And uh, work with this as much as you want, all right? Work with it as much as you want. Um, it's my opinion that any, any computer of, uh, any uh, human uh, robot of good 10 reason or higher is capable of speech, although it may not be, be uh, designed for speech. It may still have like, like I would imagine that R2-D2 has probably got like a good 10 reason, you know, at the very least. Some people may say excellent 20. I doubt it. I don't see R2 creating anything, but anyway. So you can look at it this way. Your standard computer has uh, an excellent 20 encryption program in it, okay? Um, uh, so, so, so unless you actually have a computer that has its own reason, your standard computer is going to have an excellent 20 reason. This doesn't mean your computer is smart. This is your ability to break into the computer and teach it to do what you want it to do. Now, a computer that is encrypted is going to have an, uh, a remarkable reason. 
Now, again, this doesn't mean that the computer itself is smart. It might just be a dumb computer like the one sitting in front of me or the laptop or, or whatever's around you, your, your tablet at this point. Man, nobody could imagine a tablet back then. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, any of these things. If it is an encrypted computer, consider that it's going to take a remarkable 30 feet in order to break into it. To, to, to derive the data that you're looking for. Excellent 20 if it's not an encrypted computer. Um, either way, and that's if you, uh, uh, what do you call it? <coughs> that's either way, but if you do not, if you do have the password for the, for the computer, then you only need to make a green feet roll to get the information that you want. Because like, you know, hey, uh, I've got the, the hard part is getting through the firewall and all that, right? But after that, you just have to actually find the information. And sometimes people don't necessarily make the, the information easily. Like they're not going to put, you know, if you're trying to look for secret files on the new Blackbird, you're not, you know, there's a chance, that, you know, looking up on the, the search bar of the computer, that's not going to be like secret files for the, it might be named something else like Project um, Up High or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to have to play with it and use a green feet roll at excellent or remarkable in order to get what you, the information that you want. But if you do not have the passwords, if you do not have access to get through the firewall, it's a red feet roll. Now, what's a yellow feet roll? There is nothing listed for that. So by all means, judges, feel free to have fun with it. Case in point, if um, you could you could sit there and say that, let's say that this is like the tinkerer, okay, who's actually doing this stuff, or the mad thinker, you're going to break into like somebody's computer like that. If they're using a standard computer to do whatever it is that they're doing, fine, excellent or remarkable, unless they designed this computer specifically. If they didn't design this computer, this is just a standard computer, excellent or remarkable. But if it's one of these guys who are actually typing in this data, who are actually putting this data into here, they're probably going to be a little bit smarter than your average bear. So, so even if they have the passwords, it's still a yellow feet roll. You could do something like that, by all means, but don't make me behold you to anything. Now, reprogramming, let's say, a robot. And mind you, uh, a standard robot is, is a robot that, if go back and look at the robots video, that does not have an intuition or psyche score. If they have an intuition or psyche store, th score, they are considered uh, a sentient machine. So like the vision or machine man or pst, whatever. But if they do not, if they are not sentient, then they will not have an intuition and psyche feet roll. Uh, excuse me, psyche feet, all right, or stat. They will not have those stats, intuition and psyche. Now, those things being considered, let's say you want to reprogram one of these. And the example that's in the book is Nightcrawler wants to go and reprogram the, the robots in Arcade's murder world to turn around and go against Arcade. Okay, cool. All that you have to do <clears throat> is make a, a reason feet roll. The effective cost is as simple as the only applicable rank, and that is the good 10 reason of these robots. These robots can talk, <laughs> so they're a good 10 reason, right? Unless it actually is stated to be higher. The reason of the computer, if, if let's say the leader decides to make an Omnivac robot and its reason is incredible 40, you're going to have to make an incredible 40 uh, feet in order to reprogram this robot. Okay, it's it's not going to be as simple as, you know, well, the rules say eh, the rules are just a, a steady ground, but there's still exceptions to the rules. The leader is almost always an exception. Dr. Doom, try, try reprogramming a Doom bot. Watch what happens to you. So, <laughs> um, uh, Nightcrawler doing that, it's a good 10 reason feat against his, I believe he has a good 10 reason. Maybe it's a typical six, whatever it is. So the effective cost, the final effective cost is going to be good 10. Okay, nice and simple. So that means uh, a good reason feat and 10 rounds to do it. Now, how much resources? None. None. Uh, assuming you have the tools necessary to break into the computer and do what you need, remember, most of the stuff is only going to be typing. So if you have your own little, I guess you could do it, you would use a tablet at this point, then by all means, you know what I'm saying? That should be enough. Maybe you have a watch. Maybe you have a Kamoyo uh, card or Kamoyo. Nowadays, they use uh, Kamoyo beads nowadays. God, I wish Wakanda were real. Anyway, <laughs> so whatever the tech is that you're going to use, just assume that you've got that and then you're good. Otherwise, you have to break into the computer itself. Computers are not the same as, as uh, regular hardware for building things, all right? There is no effective cost for resources to build things. All you're doing is programming or reprogramming. So that's at least very helpful. The resources feat is the thing that always gets me. Now, me personally, as an individual, that's always so expensive. 
Okay, so you reprogram these robots to do whatever you want. Maybe you want to do something different. And, and seriously, guys, have fun with this, okay? What is a computer but a whole bunch of separate files that make a computer work together? You ever break into like the uh, the, the DSS files of your, your computer, the, the my programs and, and so on and so forth? Like you go and you take a look inside there. There's a whole lot of information and it's all just strings of code in multiple different files that are taught, that are programmed to work with each other, you know? And you delete one one uh, uh, letter out of there, one digit, the whole thing could not work, all right? So this is very important to get this right. Uh, and if you get it wrong, ooh, you got to start from scratch. And it may even cost you something. You know what I'm saying? It may cost you more time, whatever. Anyway, it'll cost you stress, that's for sure. If this is real life, it'll cost you stress, that's for sure. So... Let's say you want to cause a, uh, a robot, and that could include, let's say, the vision, okay? Let's say you want to get the vision to forget something. You have to go against his, his reason. Make a feat against his reason. You also have to hold him down. <laughs> but you have to go against his reason to try and get something done. And this would be like Loki's suggestion spell. This is not, you know, if you're gonna talk about reprogramming, I would say you've gotta fight a few different programs. You get like everything that you wanna change. Judges should make this very hard because this would be like using a mind control ability. So if you're talking about somebody like the Vision, you're trying to reprogram his entire thoughts and whatnot, consider what it would take to reprogram a human's thoughts. It would take a lot, all right? So whatever you would do to make a, a, a human, like let's say what they did to um, Weapon X, to, to uh, Weapon 10, to Wolverine, that's what you would have to do, all right? Uh, if, if, if you're talking about mind control and possession and, and telepathy and, and mental probe and all these different things you have to do, all those things you'd have to do to a robot like Vision, because he is sentient, he's been around for a while, nah, this is not gonna be a simple reason feat. But if you did wanna do it like that, that's acceptable. And we've seen it in, in uh, Avengers West Coast uh, when the Vision became white. It can be done, so by all means, but make sure that each and everything that you wanna do is something special. So if you want him to forget something, it's like you're just putting it in a set, you're putting that uh, string of information into a separate file and then you're you're encrypting it so that he can't access it regularly, all right? And he's got to do some physician heal thyself on him or, or get some help from somebody else. Or you're just deleting the information, which should probably come uh, with a, a higher feet cost instead of, let's say, a yellow feet to do that, make it a red feet. You know what I'm saying? Um, getting something to work through an encrypted file is one thing, but getting something to work when you've deleted a string of information, I told you how hard it is to make something work with just a, a single character deleted. Imagine an entire string of, 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 of information deleted. Not the easiest thing in the world. So be smart, have some fun with this, and just remember, programming and reprogramming is simply math. It's simply code, you know what I'm saying? And whether you're using binary, uh, hexadecimal, octa, uh, octadecimal, I forget what the third one is. Mm. Anyway, whatever, um, whatever string of code that you're using, be it HTML, be it C, uh, be it C plus, C plus plus, C or C plus plus. I don't think there's a C plus. Anyway, um, Python, whatever you're going to be using, that is the language that has to be used in order to make a computer work. So, um, let's say maybe if you're trained in Python and somebody else comes along and they're using C++, C++, or, or Stark Plus, have some fun with it, man. Call it Stark Plus, for crying out loud. You know what I'm saying? Stain minus. Just something like that. You know, have some fun with it, dude. Um, that is a lot of what you're doing. Remember the time when the, um, the Americans and the British worked together to get a, a, a rocket launch and, uh, they actually programmed it wrong because one was using metric, the other one was using American standard <laughs> for, for the measurements. So you're talking about, okay, I'm scheduled, I'm uh, programming this to, to function in kilometers. You're programming this to work to function in miles. And although they're very close, they're not the same. And you need precision to make anything robotic or otherwise work. So that was interesting, and the whole thing wind up uh, being destroyed just because of that. Now think about an entire different language, all right? Not just a different measurement system, an entirely different language. So if you were to reprogram something that was in HTML and turn it to Python, 
That is one heck of a trick to pull on somebody. The vision might suddenly start speaking Spanish. <laughs> so again, guys, have fun with this, man. This is so much fun. Anyway, and, and again, don't forget, the rules are outdated by nature. 1986 did not have the internet, did not have uh, intelligent computers, did not have hardly anything. And I don't think Jeff Grubb was uh, an engineer or better. <laughs> just saying. So change the rules if you need, but consider just using these rules as they are with a little update. But consider writing it down. Don't keep flubbing each time. All right, guys, great gaming. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed. <laughs>